All right, it's been a while. What's going on guys, it's Stefan, and in this video I'm gonna share with you guys why I stopped publishing on YouTube. Essentially, where has Stefan been? What have I been up to? Why did I stop posting on social media, YouTube, and overall just disengage from my business over the last several months, the last year? This video will be an explanation for my absence and also an update on what's been going on in my life, some of the changes, some of the shifts, some of the realizations, some of the breakthroughs uh, that I've been having. But essentially, in 2022, I made the decision to retire from business. Um, I'm very grateful and blessed to be in a position where I never have to work another day of my life if I don't want to. Um, I've worked incredibly hard over the last 15 years, uh, worked smart, made some good decisions. To be in this position where I now have the time, the energy to basically do whatever I want to do with my life. Uh, I've been exploring a lot of different hobbies and interests and passions and other things that I've been wanting to pursue and really just enjoying my life on a different level. You know, for me, freedom has been something that's really important for my life for a long time that I've always wanted to pursue, but I've learned that there's different levels of freedom. One level is time freedom. This means that you have the time to do whatever you want to do in your day. Another level of freedom is location freedom. This means that you can be anywhere that you want to be. You can travel the world. You can be in any country. You're not tied down to one location. Another level of freedom, of course, is financial freedom. This means that you can buy whatever you want to buy. You know, you can even buy your time and never have to work again if you don't want to because, you know, you have enough money to last for the rest of your life. You have that financial freedom. But there's another level of freedom that's even more rare, that's even more important, that's even more valuable than those first three. And that's inner freedom. That's freedom of mind. That's mental and emotional freedom. You see, most people, they allow the outside world, their external environment to dictate how they feel inside. They give their power away to the weather, to the economy, to politics, to all these things that are happening that they don't fully have control over. You only have influence at best of the outside world, but you can't control it. And so the only thing that you can control is your inner world. And when you give control outside of yourself to all these other things, then you're essentially a slave to what's going on outside of you. And that's why most people, they're very reactive. They have these attachments to a certain way of being or their identity or belief systems or whatever it is, and they're very attached to it. You know, you see this, for example, in politics. You have different sides, a duality. You have the left and you have the right. And you have the people, the Democrats, the liberals, they have their ideology, their belief systems that they're very much attached to. And then you have the people on the right, the Republicans, the conservatives, they're attached to their ide ideology and they're both fighting and arguing because they're each taking on a certain position, positionality that needs to be defended. And anytime that there's something that threatens that belief system of what they believe is so important, they react. And so the very thing that people pursue most often when they become attached to it, it becomes something that they're enslaved to. And that becomes a limitation in their life. So for me, uh, on my journey of success, you know, when I was young, I didn't have money. I wanted money in my life. It was very important for me to make money in my life and become financially free. So I read all the books and I went to the seminars and I learned from everyone that I could. And I essentially, for the last 15 years, learned it and applied everything that I could to an extreme. And I created these habits that served me. I created these belief systems and these philosophies and I essentially uploaded to my brain all of these things, this way of being that would allow me to create success. And so it served me incredibly well in the context of success and achievement and making money and all of that. But it also created a limitation in my life and enslaved me to all of that. And the limitation was it served me the success, but not to the level that I wanted it to in the domains of freedom and fulfillment. And so one thing I've learned is what gets you to where you, where you are right now in your life might not necessarily get you to where you want to be, where you want to go. That the previous chapters of your life might have served you up until this point, but if you want to step into the next chapter, it requires a new level of thinking. You know, they say the level of thinking that got you to where you are 
requires a new level of thinking to get you to where you want to go. And so <clears throat> I'll give you some examples of these attachments that I've had and some of the suffering, the resistance that I noticed for me that I wanted to free myself of. Uh, one is in the topic of money. I can kind of go into different areas to give you guys examples, but with money, I think for most people, you know, you make a certain amount of money from your job, your business, your career. Most people, when they make a certain amount of money every month or every year, they want to maintain that or make more. They don't want to make less. I noticed that I had a lot of fear, a lot of resistance around making less. And any time that I'd make less money, my fear would kick in. You know, the pressure would turn on. And I would go, I would take massive action. Excuse me, I'd channel that and fuel, use that fuel to take massive action to make more money, to do more, create more, whatever I need to do to maintain and grow the amount of money that I was making. But what I realized is that while that did serve me to a certain point, it wasn't sustainable because now I'm a slave to money. I'm allowing money to dictate how I'm living my life and I'm not really having the freedom that I truly desire. Another example of this, you know, I built a pretty good sized team in my business over the last number of years. I had about 15 employees uh, full time and uh, you know, most of them I'm paying a salary. So I had a, a good six figure overhead, you know, a pretty big expense. And of course that helped me grow my business and do more and all of that. But it also created this limitation in my life and this uh, it limited my freedom in some ways because what I noticed is that as the leader, I now had to sustain and maintain the identity of being a leader. I had to, you know, had the pressure to provide the vision and the direction and still, you know, be a great example for them and work hard and, you know, show them and inspire my team so that we, you know, I can get the most out of my team. I can get the most out of my investment. But also when you uh, have a, a level of responsibility when you employ people to make sure that the business is healthy so that you can pay them and of course their livelihoods are on the line. And so that also created a level of pressure, that responsibility of that. Um, so again, that was something that served me in one context, but it was also creating some suffering for me. I noticed some anxieties and some fears arise. It you know, prevented me from really living a life that was different than what I had created. You know, when you create an identity for yourself, when you create a certain life for yourself, um, you know, it's very difficult to break, that, break out of that and to go live a very different life if you want to, right? Because you've invested so much in creating all the ego constructs, um, all the belief systems, the identities, create so much to create that and now you want to preserve it. There's fear around losing that. Another simple example would be uh, as an influencer, you know, for me, I put a lot of time, energy and effort in growing my audience publishing on Instagram, you know, I remember learning, you know, the days of Instagram for me, my days, uh, the early days of it, you know, learning from courses and experts, I got to publish three times a day and, you know, put a lot of energy into my, my, my posting and my profile and, you know, getting more followers and your reach and your views and being overly consumed by that. Same thing with YouTube, you know, um, getting a lot of subscribers and for me, like the peak of YouTube for me was in 2020 during the pandemic, everybody was locked up and whatnot and my channel grew to 1.3 million views a month. You know, and so when you, again, get to that certain point, you don't wanna go back down. You wanna maintain and grow that. And so I noticed I had a lot of fear around, maybe, uh, around less. You know, what if I stop publish publishing and people don't follow me? Or my views go down or my income goes down. Um, you know, I've been a YouTuber now for almost 11 years and there's rarely been a week where I didn't publish a video. You know, I remember some years I was publishing five videos in a week uh, and then I cut that down to three in a week and one in a week, but I've been pretty consistent overall over the last decade on YouTube. And for me, it was because I created these standards that were so important and were reinforced like a tabletop that had multiple legs reinforcing, it, you know, that, that table so it's solid. I had that where I had to publish a video every week. Like that was my rule, that was my standard. You know, I gotta maintain that standard and what I worked so hard to create. But again, the fear, anxiety, the pressure, the resistance would arise if I were to step away from that. So I had a lot of attachments to that. And what I ultimately decided to do was to practice this letting go technique. There's a few things that 
a, you know, different directions I've gone. It's one as I've learned more about, uh, I've gone more of a, a spiritual journey in terms of learning how to raise my consciousness to higher levels. Um, to be able to let go and dissolve a lot of the ego that was creating suffering for me and to be free and liberated from that. That would be a whole other video, a whole other topics that are a little bit, a little bit more difficult to explain, but I've shared some of the work that I've been doing in some previous videos and streams. But uh, the main technique that I've been using is the letting go technique. So I did a video on this earlier in 2022 called the letting go technique explained. I highly recommend you watch that video if you want to learn more, I'll link to that. But I allowed myself to give up control. Okay, I allowed myself to let go and intentionally intentionally face my fear to make less money. So intentionally seeing my income go down, intentionally seeing my views, my subscribers, not publishing videos, facing and embracing those fears, and as the fears would arise, just practice letting it go. As the belief, as the standard and the programming that I created arise and tries to kick in, practice letting it go, letting it go, and just realizing that everything will be okay. And what I've learned with attachment, there's also different levels. So let's say that you, you know, you're attached to money in your life. And I will say that what I'm sharing with you guys in terms of the uh, application of this might not be suitable for you where you are right now. Um, I totally understand that uh, I'm in a very different position than most people and most people, you know, maybe it's not the most intelligent or the wisest or maybe they're not ready to make some of these shifts that I've decided to make in my life. So be aware of that as I explain this. Um, but let's say that the topic of money is something that a lot of people have a lot of scarcity around, they have a lot of attachment to money. But if you have money, let's say in your hand, most people they're like this, this is how I was, just holding on to that at all costs. I did not wanna let it go because it took me so much to be in the position that I'm in. It took me so much to make the money that I make. It took me so much to take advantage of these opportunities. I've worked incredibly hard. I'm invested in this money for a decade plus of my life. So I don't wanna let it go, right? But at the same time, by holding on so tight, then it creates that limitation, right? It, it now holds you back in many ways, right? Uh, the money is supposed to give you freedom, but then if you have to think about the money all the time, and you're worrying about the money all the time, and consumed by the money all, all the time, then you're a slave to that money. So I thought, what if, instead of just letting go completely, I could just loosen the grip a little bit? Okay, so I could start letting go fears that I have around money, just loosen the grip. Okay, it feels a lot better. You know, it's really tight and tense when you're holding on to something, you're very attached to it. But when you start to loosen the grip, you actually feel better. You feel more free, you feel happier. You know, I can actually remember when I was in my early 20s living, you know, in a house with roommates, barely making much money, but I was more free. I was actually sometimes, you know, more joyous and liberated in my life because I didn't have all the responsibilities and all the attachments essentially that I had developed over, you know, a decade plus. But you let go a little bit. Maybe, for example, you can let go and just actually still have it there in your hand the money or whatever it is you're attached to. Well, you haven't lost it, have you? In fact, you could still you know, close that grip tight whenever you choose to, but now you're more free. Now you're more liberated. What if you took that money or you took whatever that thing is that you're attached to and you just put it down on the table? That might be scary to do. What if someone comes and takes it or what if this happens, what if that happens? But for the most part, it's still there, you can watch it, and guess what, you can pick it back up again when you want to. Even further, what if you put it down, and then you go leave your house, and, you, and then you come back, and you say, oh, wow, it's still there. You know, I don't have to be afraid, I don't have to control every single moment, I don't have to, uh, you know, feel like I have to control everything all the time. And that thing is always have to go a certain way. And so as you start to let go, and loosen that grip, and eventually you let go, it's still there, just like my business, for example. I don't even really like to use the word retired because it's not a permanent thing. Perhaps, who knows, you know, I could change my mind at any point, want to do this or that. You know, I have my whole life ahead of me, so it's not a permanent fixed state of being. That's not how I look at it. But in the case of, let's say, my business, let's say making less money or getting less views or whatever the things are that you're afraid of, it's still there. I can still come back to it, can still pick it back up again, and I can still use it whenever I choose and whenever I want to. So that's kind of a way that I, I look at attachment and 
and there's actually a practice called non-attachment, uh, which essentially is a way of living life where you're free from a lot of these attachments that result in suffering. The Buddha said suffering, the result of suffering is attachment. So, and he also talked about desire as well, but attachment, desire often leads to that attachment that produces suffering in many people. So that's where I'm at. Um, hopefully that kind of explains things a bit to you guys. Um, where I'm at now in terms of, and guess what to expect moving forward, is I want to publish, create, share, that's still a very important part of my life and my mission, but my values are different now. I'm not, I don't feel the pressure and that I have to do it. More so, uh, if I'm going to share something, it's because I want to. I'm inspired to do it. You know, before one of the ways that I, you know, I was operating my YouTube channel, for example, is, you know, when you have the standard of publishing every week, you know, for me, it's like, okay, what's going to, what's going to get views? What, what do people want? You know, what are their challenges? You know, what are the keywords people are searching for? What's trending? And it's creating in a way where you're trying to create videos that will have good success, get a good amount of views, help grow your channel and all of that. And for me, I don't want to run my YouTube channel that way anymore because it really, again, stifles my freedom and my creativity even. Instead, I want to make sure that if I create a video, it's coming from a more conscious place, a more pure place. You know, it has to be with the intention of serving. It has to be with the intention also of something that's important to me. So, you know, um, I've shared many videos in the past, many, many times that people even ask me to this day, hey, can you share with me how to make money doing this or make money with Amazon? But for me, like, you know, I'm in a very different position in my life. I don't always want to talk about the same thing. So it's not as fulfilling for me. And so there has to be a level of, um, you know, of course, to grow a business and whatnot, you have to put others' needs and make that important to serve them if they're, you know, if you're going to have people are going to watch your content, consume it, whatnot. But at the same time, I also have to be true and authentic to myself and share things that I genuinely want to share that I believe in and, and, and are things perhaps that I'm learning at this stage of my life. And the challenge also with that sometimes is some of the things I might share might not be relevant for you because you might be at a very different level of life than I'm at. And some of the things that I might share, uh, might not be that attractive to you, might not appeal to you as much. You know, if you're in that mode where you want to make money and you're expecting content from me just always on making money, well, for me, that wouldn't be as authentic for me at the stage that I'm at to always do that. I might share things that are more advanced, that things that are more powerful, in my opinion, and higher level things that you might not even be fully ready for yet. So that's kind of the direction of where I want to go at this stage of my career. You know, if I do publish a video, it might be, and who knows when I'll publish. <laughs> There's no set schedule anymore. I'm doing it more based on how I feel. And I'm really just focused at this stage of my life on enjoying my life and, um, and really enjoying the benefits of financial freedom and all the different levels of freedom, essentially, uh, which has been pretty great. It's been pretty amazing. I've been the happiest I've ever been in my life which has been pretty cool. So um, I just want to thank you guys for listening, for watching, whoever, you know, still watches my videos or been wondering about where I've been and, you know, obviously care about me. I appreciate you guys so much. It's been quite a journey and um, I'll still po publish and post, but it'll be more occasional. And, um, you know, this is probably, you know, often, you know, in YouTube videos, people say hit that bell notification so you get notified. When you're publishing every week, it's not as important, but you know, when you're publishing every few months, maybe that <laughs> might be an incentive for you to turn on that bell so that you don't miss the rare video that I do publish. So um, that's it for now. I'll keep you guys posted. Thank you guys so much. Happy New Year's, and we'll talk again soon. God bless.